Guys, this is a great story. This week, a 12-year-old girl was able to do something she had never been able to do before. She was able to dig in to her Thanksgiving meal without any fear. Isabella suffered from serious food allergies, but after participating in a groundbreaking study right here in New York City at the Mount Sinai Kravis Children's Hospital, she has a cornucopia of new food options. A few years ago, eating this ice cream bar would have sent Isabella Kohlenberg to the emergency room. And yet, here she is, the result of a years-long journey to overcome her multiple food allergies. We first realized that Isabella may have food allergies when we took a trip to San Diego. She was about two years old. With the food that we were having her eat, it was causing her breathing difficulties. Growing up with severe food allergies, a source of constant concern for her parents, a personal struggle for Isabella. It's hard not, like, you see everyone and you feel, like, left out, kind of, and you still, you can't eat the same foods as everyone. Isabella has multiple food allergies, milk, wheat, and peanut. Someone who needs to avoid these three foods is really very limiting on a day-to-day -day basis. Over 5 million children in the U.S. under the age of 18 have food allergies, and 40% of them have more than one. When I started school, I would never, ever eat at school, ever. Like, not even one thing. After years of struggling, Isabella finally found help with a life-changing food allergy study conducted by a team of researchers at Mount Sinai Children's Hospital in New York City. So what we're doing in this study is seeing whether the addition of another medication, Chinese herbal medications for this study specifically, would increase the safety of the oral immunotherapy process. And what is oral immunotherapy? Oral immunotherapy is that's feeding the allergic child small increasing amounts of the food that they're allergic to under medical supervision to effectively teach the immune system to be less reactive to the foods over time. Just two successful years later, she was given a whole new lease on life. So we think her future is very bright. She's been able to convert over to real foods for each of these allergens. Now eating one serving of food that was off limits before is actually part of maintaining the immunity she's developed as a result of the study. Food like ice cream. It's a real treat. Unthinkable in the past though. And she can't wait to eat it all this holiday season. So my mom makes this ladyfinger cake that my grandma used to make, and I can have my dairy and wheat in the same. Cakes. The family's message this holiday season, there is hope. We have a lot to be thankful for this Thanksgiving. <laughs> As we said, very cool. We're going to be joined now for more on this by Dr. Jen, Dr. Jen Ashton, who's uh, got some more insight on food allergies. Jen, good morning to you. Um, let me ask you, where, it seems to me like growing up, I didn't see that many food allergies surrounding me. What, are there now more of these than there have ever been before? And what's driving that? Dan, they're definitely on the rise. Um, and I love this story because it incorporates the best of Western medicine with Eastern medicine. And treatments like this are available right now. They're starting to be available at some major academic medical centers. But as to the why, we don't really understand that. There are a few theories. One of them is called the hygiene hypothesis. It's basically we're removing the good, positive, stimulatory exposure that our immune system normally gets by just making things too clean. Another one is delayed exposure of babies and toddlers to the common allergens. There's actually some data to suggest that the opposite is more preventative and helpful, that exposing them to these common allergens earlier is helpful to reduce that. And then environmental factors, just the way the food is processed, that may be at play too. In terms of hygiene, I'm not gonna feel guilty then that my son found a penny on the street <laughs> and put it in his mouth the other day. So what are the signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction? I think the key here is to understand that this normally occurs minutes after hours to ingesting that food, and it can affect or manifest in the skin system, in the gastrointestinal system, respiratory and cardiovascular, everything from hives to redness, nausea, vomiting, uh, to shortness of breath and difficulty breathing. It is a medical emergency, to be clear. And I know this is personal for you. You've suffered with food allergies yourself. What should people know about medical treatments for food allergies? I think before the treatment, Dan, the key thing is get formally tested by a board-certified allergist. If you are allergic to foods, carry an epinephrine auto-injector with you at all times. Tell people about your allergies and then tell them again. And if in doubt, do not eat it. 
If in doubt, do not eat it. Jen Ashton, we really appreciate it. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.